I have traveled to the far reaches of the galaxy. Even done it multiple times. I found games so clean they make your mind go bruh. Gameplay and world so good you give a left nut to play it for the first time again. Travel through multiple timelines to see games whose names you hear so often they might as well be added to the dictionary. And I've seen games so shit they should be changed to be named garbage. But Slime Rancher is none of that. Literally. You just ranch slimes all day. Let's start with a synopsis. And very, very appropriately named Slime Rancher, you very, very appropriately ranch slimes. On the planet created within this universe far, far away from Earth, very, very appropriately named the Far, Far Range, you start out with a group of plots and you have a few different options for what to, you want to do with them in order to advance yourself toward becoming the Slime King. In terms of story, in the game there are a few different characters that show themselves in the form of Space AOL Instant Messengers and Boomer Space Letters left out in physical locations. Like, seriously, what kind of boomer uses space letters anymore? But we will get to those letters and such later in the video. On to the gameplay. One of the main options to do with your newfound pl plots of land is to make cages for the slimes you suck up into your pocket dimension. That is your gun that you can put <laughs> them inside and feed them to collect their poop. You sell their poop on a never-ending market hole that shoots money back at you. Don't know who's buying the poop or why they're buying it, S but yeah. Anyway, use your newfound space money to buy various other things on the ranch in order to expand. The most important things you can buy are more ranch plots, upgrades, the laboratory, and space ranch expansions. With the ranch plots, you have a few different options besides just cages for your Pokemon. But the most important two are going to be the corral and the garden. This will be the bread and butter of your ranch and you will spend most of your time attempting to micromanage these two because corral hold your slime and gardens feed them. It is also good to note that slime can also be made into big boy slimes. The big boy slimes can be made basically by forcing a slime into interracial flirt consumption. I'm sorry I put that image in your head. So both of these are essential to make if you want to maximize your efficiency and make the most V-Bucks possible. Upgrades are acquired from this machine right here. You initially get some really cool new abilities like a jetpack and others this quickly becomes a very linear upgrade system where you get extra health and energy every now and then and it's not really that big of a deal. Truly the most useful upgrades are the inventory count increases because confusingly you can't ever get more inventory slots. Ever. You are constantly stuck with four items and when you want to explore new regions it gets very, very frustrating, causing you to constantly and consistently be forced to come home. At least you get those energy upgrades to run back and forth, am I right? The lab could technically fall under the ranch expansion, but I'm putting it here because I feel like it. The lab is a mid to late game progression and you want to unlock this expansion as soon as you put together enough space monopoly money to get it. The laboratory gives you a money sink where you can use plorts and materials that you unlock once you unlock the lab to create new things using slime science. Basically you get blueprints for things you want to make and you can look at the necessary resources to make the blueprint. You can put in resources like plort, materials you get from the wild as well as material you will get from the excavators that will unlock once you unlock the science lab. 
You then take those materials and you make the thing. There isn't a terrible amount of depth to the lab in terms of mechanics, but hey, you can make cute <laughs> ornaments and decorate the flora. I won't go into too much detail in the lab so as to avoid spoilers so that you can experience what the lab has to offer for yourself. Ranch expansions are pretty straightforward. They give you access to more plots of land and some of them even give you access to new parts of the world and this is where we transition to talking about the most exciting part of the game. The exploration. Now I've talked a lot of space crap on this game so far but I must say the thing that keeps me loving this game and playing through all the other crap are the slimes and the world in which they persist. The wonder that it created when you are brought into this world is just fantastic. You get placed into this bright colorful world with new things around every nook and cranny, new and adorable slimes to collect. Some are aggressive and some simply jump in joy at the sight of you, but all the slimes are a fun and unique discovery. You can only imagine my excitement and I finally got the jetpack for exploring early on. The mystery that is created as you find space notes from the previous owner of the ranch that give you insight into this mysterious boomer's character only adds to this world's grandeur. These notes along with your gmail inbox basically make up the story of the game. You get a few different characters in your email and one of them is basically your typical po Pokemon rival character. Then there is best girl or, or boy, it's kept pretty ambiguous. Casey. The content that you get from her is essentially there to establish the character relationship between Casey and Beatrix. A connection to your home world so you don't seem like an antisocial slime hillbilly who, who had no friends back on earth. I would love to explore these in more detail but I think if you plan on playing the game this is worth a read of your own. We conclude thusly. This is a game made for a chill atmosphere at the end of the day. The gameplay to someone who comes from a past of genres like MOBAs, MMOs, and FPS games, it may be very difficult to put aside your min-maxing and just accept this game is meant to be taken at a much slower pace. Accepting a few minor losses here or there when a slime eats your hen from- No! You, you ate him! The game is fantastic, but like all others, it is not for everyone. If you're anything like me, it will take you about an hour of figuring out the game's mechanics to start min-maxing, which the game was not built for. In my case, I don't mind the lack of depth, because I enjoy cute things. But it may be a little different for you. Only way you can know is to try your hand at it, however. Now if you'll excuse me everyone, I need to get back to being the Pokemon Master slash Go Farming King slash Slime King that I was always meant to be since I was a young lass. Take it easy out there guys, and don't get lost in the game for 15 space hours till your space mom calls you asking why you missed work, school, and space college. Like I did a while ago when I was playing Space Cookie Clicker. Good luck Space Ranchers, I'm signing off the Space Comms.